Get Bruce Willis back again. <laughs> so that's a little bit of the that's a little bit of the history of the launch. Um, and then you know there's a, a Mark had mentioned I, I flew STS-135, which is the last shuttle mission. And there's a little bit of commonality between uh, between this vehicle and and 135. Two engines that flew on STS-135 are actually on uh, on this mission, which is pretty cool. Uh, NASA had uh, I think 16. What they used to call SSME, Space Shuttle Main Engines, are now officially designated RS-25s. They had 16 of them at the end of the program, put them in a can, you know, preserved them for, uh, for you know, the, the duration. And I think I looked at a little bit of the pedigree on the engines that are under. One engine is actually flown 10 times. Um, yep. A couple of them are thrown three or four times, but sort of unique for me. It's, uh, you know, we, of course, we have the privilege of reusing our engines every time. This will be sort of its final finale, because uh, we're not going to get to see this one again. But it's uh, it's going to go off and you know, what is hopefully a very successful mission. And, uh, and it'll have served this country well. And we have, I believe, Mark, there to on this, uh, another three more missions worth of those uh, called yep. vintage shuttle engines. We're going to use them up. Yep. We'll use them all up. So. Anyhow, I just sort of throw out a little bit of history of the area. You know, this is, um, I've been fortunate enough, I moved from Houston here about five years ago, and it really sort of enabled me to learn a little bit more about the history. You know, if, if you get, uh, you know, south in Cape Canaveral area, the old uh, Gemini, Apollo, uh, Mercury, early Mercury uh, launch pads are all down there. There's not much of them left. You know, we're talking 40, 50, you know, plus years in some cases. And you can imagine this is not a very, it's not a very friendly environment for anything, you know, everything corrodes here, so eventually the launch pads all fall apart, but but there's still, when you know where to look, you know exactly what you're looking at, and uh, there's a lot of rich history here, so. Uh, Mark, what do you think? You want to do some yeah. Q&A, or? You guys up for maybe a, co a question or two? Okay, well, that's how you do it. Raise your hand, and. Uh, that big power right there. Uh, you, you want to take that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Patty. Boy, I'm, I'm a little outside of my company, but I do know what that is. Um, so the, the smaller tower is as what's left of um, the original tower that was there for the space shuttle. Um, so that is that's the original one complex. Uh, the original complex to the south of that, that large one is for Mr. Musk's Starship, right? Yeah. And Mark, you may actually know, know a little bit more about what the long term plan. Yeah, there. Uh, well, there's a lot of discussion uh, whether they were going to build that uh, and launch it from here, but they did. They worked that out. But that tower, that rocket is like 400 feet tall, yeah, over 10 million pounds of thrust, 33 engine 